So you guys, we're gonna find out if this $20 roll of soundproofing thermal stuff will actually work in helping to reduce the noise and maybe control the heat in your uh, classic car or your newer car. Say you have a Toyota Camry or Corolla, but you want it to uh, sound and feel kind of like a Lexus. This is the stuff, 20 bucks, and I want to show you down below where you can buy it. I want to show you how to install it. We're going to use my 1967 Porsche as an example on how to do it. So uh, let's get into it and let's get this installed. So this is what I got from Lowe's. It's peel and stick aluminum. And I'm hoping that just one roll will do the entire Porsche. It's uh, made in the USA. One roll is six inches by 25 feet. So we'll have to wait and see if this will do the entire back end of our Porsche 912, 911. All right, so here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna take your roll of your aluminum foil stuff that you got from uh, link down below or from the hardware store. You're gonna need a roller, which I'll also link down below. And then an X-Acto knife or razor blade, whatever you have laying around. And of course, uh, you know, cold snacks, drinks, all that kind of fun stuff to make the installation go just a little bit easier because it's, it's a job. This shit is sticky as heck. All right, first thing we need to do, guys, is you need to remove the interior from your car. Uh, pull up carpet. You're going to remove seats. You're going to remove panels. Uh, take your time. Um, you know, maybe there's a YouTube video out there that will show you for your particular vehicle on what to undo or where to unscrew, how to pull stuff apart. But you're just going to need to take everything out of the car if you're doing the inside, the seats, the carpet. If you're doing the trunk, pull all that stuff out. So let's get in here in my uh, Porsche, my 67, and we're gonna go ahead and remove the panels. Those are just panels that come off. That deck lid back there will pull out as well. Of course, the bottom of the seat and the seat backs and the sides, all that will come completely out with the carpet and the padding and the seats. Again, you just gotta get in there and unscrew it and uh, take your time pulling it out. And take pictures if you need to. Remember where stuff goes, so that way when you're done, you can put this back in. You're not scrambling to find out. So here's what we got. Bam! This is what it should look like when you're done for our car. So we'll go ahead and just start removing everything. Get those seat bottoms out, those seat backs out. We're gonna come in, get that cover on the back there, the package tray shelf, screwdriver. There's there's these little um, window clamps or, or window trim that goes right below the windows in the backs of the uh, Porsche 911s. And then undo the weather stripping for the door to be able to get in because that side panel, the uh, leather wraps around the pillar into the door and the actual door seal kind of holds it all together so we get that out now kind of take your time clean this out brush it down wipe it down and uh, do your best to contortion yourself into a position to start this process so what I started off was basically going to that back top of the window laying out about how much I was going to need and understanding that the back window arches, so it's not a straight across thing. So I gave myself plenty of overage, so that way I can trim it off later. And I found if you just roll it back and kind of shimmy it into where it needs to go, kind of gives you a rough estimate of how much you're going to need to put into that spot right there. Kind of move it up into place, get it where it needs to go, and grab yourself either a pair of scissors or your razor blade. I went ahead and used an X-Acto knife. I felt it worked really well with this stuff here, although towards the end of the, um, the day, I was just cutting it with the scissors. Just take a pair of scissors and just snip, snip. The, um, the, 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 the in between, the black in between is sticky that you pull off the paper to. That's pretty sticky and it will sometimes get caught on your scissors. So just, just be ready to clean your wife's sisters, sisters, ha, scissors, ha. Anyways, um, let's get this cut into place. It's a little bit, uh, there we go. And it is some sticky stuff, I'll tell you that right now. Um, not a big smell as, as far as when you first open the package up, it did smell a little bit. But once I get into my car, and this is a small car, and I'm a big boy, and I'm sitting in here trying to get this done. And um, I did this the uh, middle of March in Phoenix, Arizona. And it was like 82 degrees today when I was doing this. So um, not a lot of smell once it's out of the packaging. But it is gooey and, and just sticky as heck. So yeah, take your time. And that's why I said I kind of moved to scissors 
towards the uh, end of this process. Then, I'm going to take it. And remember, that uh, silver side is going to go up. So I brought it up just to kind of make sure I can get myself in a spot. And this, this is tough in this little car. Back seats and a Porsche 911, biggest joke ever. Even my kids, when they were little, barely couldn't sit back here because there's just not enough room between the back seat and the back of the forward seat. It's essentially just for storage in a sense. So what I thought I would do is start peeling off one little section, kind of put it down onto the, the board there, the back of the metal, and then slowly pull it back. So I'm just taking my hand, making sure I can get it as clean as possible. I wiped it down, but again, you know, it's dusty here in the Valley of Phoenix, and uh, it's a constant battle keeping your car clean. So kind of uh, peel that back a little bit, get a little bit of it exposed, and then I kind of went in and folded that end over to try to get it up and in between where the headliner meets down to the body and also the uh, rubber window trim. And got another, just took my hand and just kind of started sticking it down, getting it into place right where I wanted to, firmly against that uh, bottom part of the uh, pillar there. And then just make sure it was rubbed in nice and tight. That way, when I go to pull back, it's not going to go wicky wonky all over us. Okay, kind of straighten it out a little bit, kind of get into position here. Again, tough for me being a big guy in a little car. If I was doing this in, say, my Acura or my wife's truck, it would have been a lot easier. But nonetheless, so pull the paper back just a little bit. Use your hand just to kind of push it down. Kind of get it as straight as you can. And again, this is an arch in that back window area. So you're dealing with a straight piece of stuff trying to go into an arch. So it's not going to lay down correctly. You're going to have some little creases and whatnot. But just go ahead and keep pulling that paper back little by little. Flatten it down as you go. Good, good. We'll come back and get those here in a minute. Just trying to make sure it gets down firmly. All right, get that paper off of there. And then slide that in the space. And a little more. And again, kind of kind of tucking it up and in is kind of the way it was working for me to get it into that spot right there. And of course, every car is going to be a little bit different, but on this this Porsche, all the back ends are kind of this way if you have one of the coupes. So just working it. Take your time. Don't rush. This is super sticky stuff. I get it. You're going to probably curse two or three times trying to get this in. And by the end of the day, you're going to be fine. This took me about two hours to do what you're going to see at the end of the video and how it all came together. So it's now stuck down. I'm feeling pretty confident that um, it's looking good here. Making sure it's down. Kind of taking my hand and just getting it up into that lip by the uh, windshield molding, which is that rubber seal that goes all the way around your windshield on a classic car. The newer ones, the seal's a little bit different, but nonetheless, it is it is what it is. And man, do I look red with that red shirt on in this camera. I'm not that red. <laughs> All right, so now you're going to just take your roller and just start taking out all the bubbles, all the creases, work it, just slight pressure or, or medium pressure, whatever it's going to take to uh, get this to seal and stick down perfectly to the bare metal on your car. Just take your time, roll it, and again, you're going to figure out this stuff pretty quickly about how much pressure you have to have and what you're going to need. Hear the difference? already can tell a difference yep this it's it so far just this first sheet definitely uh, worth it and I'm gonna do pretty much every inch that I can with this you could in reality just put like two strips down the center of this big piece of this panel in the middle that way the sound is kind of driven to the middle of the panel but you know what I had time I had extra materials at least I thought I did it wound up taking me two rolls to this back end um, but I could have probably skipped a few areas and one roll would have done the entire back end of my Porsche but just take your time and rub rub it in there get it in there nice and tight 
All right, let's go ahead and we'll get this next piece in and I'll give you a close up of what it looks like on the second piece. And as you can see, it's not gonna make uh, the full coverage. We're gonna have a little bit of strip in the middle there, but I think I can come in with some straps when I do the bottom section and fill that gap in all the way. So let's uh, take a little bit of a closer look here. You can kind of see, again, that bottom piece is straight across, but that top piece has to arch to the back window and you are gonna have some ripples and, and whatnot because of that. So take your time, do the best you can. Just your whole point is to get this to stick down. And uh, listen. definitely hear a difference in sound already with that down we'll go ahead and we'll continue on but this time we'll go going down like a waterfall and make sure that we make cutouts for everything we need for our attachments so here we go and this was a little bit more manageable not such huge pieces um, again yeah smaller was much easier again um, trimming and you can see there I took part of that piece that went around the wheel well and I used it up top and again easy just come in measure it cut it uh, it was much easier doing this section of it than it was those long ones just easier to manage definitely uh, i think if i did this again i probably would do strips going this way instead of lengthwise the next time just for um, ease of management of this stuff because it is so sticky uh, and can kind of be a pain in the ass to get it to lay down when you need to here i'm cutting out the various spots that we need that uh, attach for seats. Make sure you do that because you don't want to have to cover something up and go to put your seats back in and realize that you covered it up uh, when it's too late. Take your time. And I didn't really worry too much about going straight and making it even. Again, all this is going to be covered up with carpet um, in the end. So we just needed to have coverage to be able to take the sound deadening out of the vehicle when I'm driving it. And remember, this is a Porsche, so that engine is right behind that back seat. So all that vibration, that noise gets amplified and through the cabin. So that was one of my big things to do this. And a buddy of mine back in high school had a Volkswagen Bug, and we didn't use this stuff. We used some other, I think it was Dynamat back in the day, but uh, it worked out. So it's, this is how far I was able to get pretty much on day one. Um, almost finished, almost finished. Got almost everything but that one bucket over there done. And as you can see here, this is the original um, sound padding on the sides. And I'm, I'm probably gonna skip over the side panels. So here's what I went, ran back to Home Depot. And again, my first one you saw in the beginning was from Lowe's. This one is from Home Depot. Um, about the same price, the same coverage, the same specs, uh, just a different brand. Um, but a, a little bit different was it was m much more stickier and the paper to peel off the back was much more difficult to remove the paper from uh, this roll than it was the first roll. And again, I, I really think you should buy this stuff with the link below. It's a much better quality than both of these combined. There's that original soundproofing from the factory, which I think I'm just going to cover that right up um, with some of the stuff. Might as well just go over it, kind of make it uniform. And I may come back later and uh, do those side panels, but for now, I think this will be fine. All right, let's get to it. Let's finish this off here. Go ahead and get this moving. Again, just taking your time, measure it out if you need to. Get one side down, use your exacto knife or your, your uh, scissors, and cut and trim as needed where you need to go on this and it actually again it took probably an hour the first day and a, another hour the second day so about two hours to do the back side of my uh porsche coupe here um and again i think if it would have been a bigger vehicle and i wasn't so crammed up in the back area of this car i probably would have been a little bit faster um definitely was much faster when i started working with the smaller sheets I feel like I had to really fight and wrestle those big long strips up there by that back window. The second hardest part is all the different contours that this car has. Um, again, if it was just, I guess like a Toyota or something where the panels are basically flat and there's not a lot of arches to them, again, would have been a lot faster. So in reality, I think you could do a, 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 a four-door sedan or something like a Camry. You could probably do it in a Saturday afternoon with, with two or three rolls of stuff. 
All right, guys, so here we are all said and done. You can kind of see the final results. Everything is in place. Still a little bit more trimming to do on that back window. Didn't get around to it, but I at least have everything covered. And again, I'm not going to do the sides just yet. That has the original soundproofing from the factory that is still in really good shape. And maybe when I do the floors this summer with this stuff and the doors, I may go ahead and do those sides. Well, we installed it and it took basically two rolls to the back side of our uh, Porsche, but I'd imagine if I was gonna do a full-size car or a, you know, a Chevy Camaro or something like that, or a, a Nissan, whatever, I'd probably, do, for 20 bucks a roll, buy three. You know, click down below, order them, get them in. You're gonna need a roller, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. I found the scissors worked better uh, in the end than the X-Acto knife, but for the most part, it is what it is. Um, but anyways, this stuff here, there's, a smell at first, but the smell goes away within a couple of minutes after you pull it out of the packaging. Um, and honestly, we could tell a difference when we took it for our road test. There is a difference having this in the car. And again, you don't have to put it over every square inch. You can kind of just make, kind of sectioned out just to where the middle of the panel is covered. Or if you want and you're bored, do it like I did. Just do the whole thing. All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a like. And any comments you want to do for a future project, let me know down below. We'll see if we can't get to it and show you how to do it. All right, guys. I'm out.